Yep, good afternoon. Good luck to Conzo Martin and our basketball team as they start the season tonight. Uh, know that they're very excited and, and uh, wish them all the best. And we're going to be rooting for them right here uh, uh, in our football complex. Um, you know, after reviewing the game, you know, again, like I said, after the game, I was proud of our effort, but uh, effort alone is not enough. We, we did not play nearly clean enough or execute well enough in really any of the three phases to win a game. And as the coaching staff, I challenged them, we got to get more out of our schemes. Uh, we got to be more productive out of our schemes to put our players in a better position to be successful and help them execute. And we, 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 we just didn't do a, a, well, a good enough job um, of putting our guys in positions and, and making sure that those guys could execute what we were asking them to execute in order to win. Uh, you know, we left too many opportunities on the field. Um, and, you know, like I, I told our team and same thing I told our staff, uh, effort is one thing and that's good, but we, we got to play much better. Our, our goal is to be in that game. And, and uh, you know, we were in it the first quarter, but that's why you play four quarters. So we got to be much better moving forward uh, and we got to execute a lot better. Um, new week, new opportunity versus South Carolina. Obviously, they're coming off a big win. Uh, I thought they played very well in all three phases. You know, Coach Beamer is doing an outstanding job uh, of getting the most out of his team. He's played three different quarterbacks throughout the season, and I think they're finding an identity with the young man they have right now. They lean on their running backs. Obviously, Kevin Harris led the SEC in rushing last year, and they've got two other backs that I think complement those guys really well. Uh, they, they're dynamic on the, on the outside at wide receiver. Um, you know, Georgia had two, they had two uh, deep balls and, and have been productive throwing the ball vertically down the field uh, to the Josh Van, I believe is his name. You know, defensively, uh, their front four is back, all starters. Number one's a surefire uh, NFL draft pick. I think he's probably a potentially a first round draft pick. Um, their two interior guys have gone against him several times. They're really good players. Uh, and Aaron Sterling at the field defensive end is also good players. They're backed up by some guys that can really uh, get off and, and, and rush the passer. The, the young man, Birch, I believe, was a five-star kid uh, out of South Carolina. So they're really talented there. Uh, the linebackers have a lot of playing experience. I feel like um, uh, the, the young man, Staley, has been there for a long time. And, and obviously, he's played a lot of SEC football and is very productive. Um, so got our hands full. Uh, and what we're going to need to do uh, in order to win. Thankful to be home at Faro. Uh, thankful to have an opportunity to, to put a product on the field that, that our fans will be excited about. And we got to go out to work today to make that happen. With that, I'll open it up for questions. Steve, as you said, you're looking at the film, kind of your assessment of what you saw out of Brady and Tyler. And going forward, if you don't have Connor, did, did Saturday change your mind on, on the approach at all? That, you know, would anything change? Yeah, um, after reviewing the, fa the the film, I thought it, it was really very similar to what I said to the team. Um, I thought those guys both played really hard. They both showed a lot of toughness. Um, they both did some really good things, but at the end of the day, we didn't play well enough at that position in order to give ourselves a chance to win. We had a couple of really critical errors, specifically in the first half that would have led us to, to, to continue drives. Obviously, the second drive of the game uh, on a third and two, we had a busted play um, that, that just can't happen in that situation. Um, the next drive on a third and two, we had a penalty uh, that, that can't happen. You know, um, you know we, we scrambled and end up, I wouldn't say diving, but fell short by a yard at the quarterback position. Like, those things just can't happen in order for us to against the you know against the quality opponent. And so we've got to improve. We missed a couple of throws, took a sack. Um, I was proud of them. They didn't turn the ball over, um, but we were inaccurate in some of our passes. Uh, so again, we've got to continue to play better. I've got to continue to coach better. I've got to do a better job of putting them in a position to be more successful with the schemes and uh, that we ask them to execute. And so. That was my assessment of their play. Again, like I told both of them, I was extremely proud of the fact they didn't turn the ball over. They didn't put us, uh, you know, in jeopardy on either side of the field. But we've got to continue to be better and give us a chance to win that game. Um, you know, how we will play this game will, will be determined based on where we're at after tomorrow's practice and who we feel like is available and why they're available. And then that will determine you know, the direction that we go. <clears throat> I know that injury comes up, injury report comes out Thursday, but the progress that you've seen from 
progress of the fire has been made? Is it in progress, do you think, in terms of being able to potentially play a game? Anything after that? I mean, the injury report will come out Thursday, and you all get to be out the first three periods of practice today. I think that's it. So you all can uh, make your own determinations about that stuff and speculations. And um, he'll be at practice today. And we'll see where we're at. He's not 100%, um, but we'll see where we're at. And then, you know, us with the medical staff and him, we'll make a determination on where he's at after today and then make a determination Wednesday. And then we'll put out an injury report on Thursday. Eli, specifically with Brady, where have you seen him maybe grow and develop the most since he got on campus? And where would you maybe like to see him take the next step? Um, you know, I think Brady's a very intelligent player. Um, and, he, and he really wants to do all the right things. Uh, I was. I thought he did a nice job of um, being decisive on a couple of third down opportunities where he pulled the ball down and ran. I thought he had a nice third down opportunity that he took and made the throw to, to uh, Barrett. Um, I think we just have to continue to clean up the execution. You know, there was a couple of plays where we went to the wrong side on our first read instead of you know executing the play as it was designed. That, that comes through repetition and understanding and preparation. And, and uh, we will continue to do that. He's going to continue to grow in that. Um, and then I think just accuracy. Eli, this might be, the, I think, South Carolina's probably the only team in the UK to fall three years as a head coach. Is it different? You've played in your first yeah, half as well. Yeah, that's a good point. Can you notice any difference in pairing? Because I'm maybe a third straight year you would for Kentucky or Tennessee when it's just the second straight year. Is there anything different in your approach or any recognition? Um, I, you know, obviously it's new schemes in all three phases. Uh, but there is some familiarity with some of the players that are in executing those schemes and, and maybe how they've played in the past and, and what are some things that uh, they do really well that we have to be aware of. You know, number one can affect the game. Um, I mean, he, he affects the game. Um, and if you don't take that into account, uh, you know, it's going to be a bad opportunity for our offense. So, you know, stuff like that, understanding th uh, how well 30 does of getting everybody lined up playing uh, in the box and, and does a great job of uh, fitting runs. I think he's a very sound, solid uh, linebacker for them. Um, you know, their back end's a little bit new. Um, but yeah, I think there's just some familiarity in knowing who those guys are. Eli, what makes that quarterback rotation so challenging? It seems like no one really wants to do one, but sometimes it's kind of the, the option that you have. Um, I think it's challenging because everybody has different strengths. And, and, you know, for me as a play caller, I'm trying to attack a defense. And so it's really no different than how we utilize our routes or our running backs. It's, OK, well, he's better at this, so let's put him in on this play that attacks that defense. And I, I think, you know, we felt like going into the Georgia game, adding an extra runner into the game with Tyler would be beneficial. And I think he showed, you know, especially early in that game on the first two drives why that was the case. Uh, you know, Brady does some other things, you know, uh, in the in the past game, reading coverages and some of that stuff that, okay, once we got into a game where we knew we needed to throw the ball, you know, that was going to be something that had to be uh, played into. So I think really it comes into play into the player's strengths a little bit more. Uh, it's just very difficult to try to prepare um, all quarterbacks in a, in a short work week, you know, and that's – that's really going to be the challenge this week. There's no way I can prepare three quarterbacks to be the starter. So we're going to have to narrow down pretty quickly who's playing and how we're going to do that. Tyler, throwing the can, how much is that kind of a work in progress? That sidearm thing, I don't know if that's what you'd like to see or that's just something you've always done. I like to see it when it's completed. Um, <laughs> you know, I think that's the big thing now in college football and really in the NFL is throwing the ball at different arm, uh, launch points and different arm angles. And I, I think. What you have to do is be solid in your fundamentals first and then be able to expand on that. And when you watch NFL players and that's what they're doing, it's no different than when I was growing up. I'd work on my fadeaway free throw jumper like Michael Jordan because that was his shot, you know. But I, I wasn't obviously Michael Jordan. So in seventh grade when I'm posting up on the, the, the elbow and, and taking a fadeaway shot, my seventh grade basketball coach, Eddie Quarter was like, what are you doing? Like, that's not <laughs> – you know, and I think that's the same thing now. We're seeing these guys, you see Aaron Rodgers, you know, flip the hips, and you see Patrick Mahomes scramble and sidearm balls and Baker Mayfield and Russell Wilson. And, you know, so those younger guys practice that stuff. And it's good, and we need, we got to be able to do that. But we also got to secure our fundamentals first. And, um, you know, Tyler's got a lot of natural ability and talent, and he's continuing to grow as a quarterback. 
um, and we're very excited about his future. Um, so we'll get there. Uh, you know, we'll get there. That he's going to have a lot of opportunities to play quarterback. How do you see Connor maybe help out these young guys as, as they try to take everything in that they have to take in? Yeah, I think he uh, really thought he did a nice job on the sideline of talking to those guys after series and giving them ideas of what the coverage was and how they were adjusting to our speed motions out of the backfield and what are some things to consider. And then, you know, there was one time when I got on Brady probably a little too harshly, um, and, and he was just over there just, hey, flush it, man, just flush it, go the next play, flush it, told me to flush it, which was really good. It was, you know, something that I needed to hear, and I thought it was nice. Yeah, I think you have to you have to limit your play you know your play call menu, and you also have to uh, rely on what you call your DNA, which is things that you know that they've got banked reps on. You know, I think there's you know we install the same set of plays the first basically six days of practice every spring, every summer, and every fall camp, and so Brady's had the opportunity to install those now four times. So we can he's got memory recall and some of that stuff that maybe Tyler doesn't have just yet, um, and so you have to rely on those things. Saturday was probably as well as or pretty close to the, the you guys have played run defense all year. After looking back, what specifically did did you do maybe better than you had been doing in some previous weeks? Yeah, I was. I, I really felt like we were physical in the trenches. I thought our two linebackers played really downhill. We, you know, changed up our lineup a little bit. We had Blaze and Chad Bailey, and both those guys were not passive. They were downhill, fit, fitting gaps, running through. Um, I thought our defensive line did a nice job of, of shedding blocks, getting skinny at the point of attack, playing more vertical. I thought we did a better job of setting edges. Uh, I think there was only a couple of plays that, that uh, got out on the perimeter, and those were off of quick screens more than or swing screens more than they were on you know, designed runs that, that had really been gashing us. Um, and so I thought you know, those things helped us. Obviously, we still gave up 166 yards rushing, which is too many. Um, but it was a step in the right direction, and, and I thought really our front seven, and including Martez, uh, did a nice job in his fits um, this week. Coach, you guys have three games left. So yep. you yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> for us, it's all about this week. It's really all about this week. Um, we really can't focus on anything else. Um, in order to get to six, you got to first get to five. And we've got an opportunity this week at home versus a quality opponent um, that we've got to play well against. And so that's, that's really all of our focus. There's uh, an opportunity to win a trophy, you know, at the, the Mayor's Cup. And so, uh, you know, you got an opportunity to, to, to claim a tangible benefit after the game. And so really that's our focus, our personal pride and our performance. Um, an opportunity to not only represent the front of the jersey, the back of the jersey, but to claim a, to claim a trophy at the end. And so that, that, that's really how we're approaching this, is it's one game at a time. And uh, you know we got to prepare and have a great Tuesday practice in order to put ourselves in a position to have a great Wednesday practice and continue to stack good days. And if we'll do that, uh, then the, the – you know, I think one thing that we have to continue to learn as a program is that just because you do all the things that you're supposed to do, it doesn't guarantee the outcome. Right? But if you don't do the things that you're supposed to do, you don't have any chance with the outcome. And I think where uh, the disappointment came from early in the year was our football team was doing the things that it needed to do to put itself in a position to win, but the outcome didn't reflect the work that we put in. Um, that's OK. That's part of the process. You've got to continue to do those things. You have to have a great Tuesday practice in order to put yourself in a position to execute on Saturdays. When you go back and look at our game Saturday, you can rewind to the Tuesday that we had where we had busted assignments. We had missed uh, or late to this or late to that. Like Those things don't give you a chance to win on Saturdays because the little things add up. And so you know, for us, again, with three games left, we're not worried about those three games. We're worried about making sure that we can duplicate a process that gives us a chance to be successful. And in order to do that, we got to have a great toughness Tuesday. We, we, we got to show up. We have to have great meetings, great walkthrough focus. We got to have a great practice with fundamentals and techniques. We got to make mistakes, fix those mistakes, correct those mistakes, take the teaching from the, the uh, classroom to the walkthrough to the practice. 
Um, and that's really our focus. Uh, you know, a bowl game is a product of what your season is. Our season isn't completed yet. And in order for us to, to reap that benefit, we got to put in the work for today. Specific to Saturday, I think South Carolina opened some eyes with what they did this weekend. What jumped out to you in taking a look at that game specifically um, that, that they were doing so well? They controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides. Um, you know, I think they rushed for – maybe 250 or 300 yards. They had 200 yard rushers. Uh, that alone is going to be enough to win a game in this league, you, you, especially with those two running backs. They created explosive plays. I thought the quarterback extended the ball, uh, extended plays in the backfield um, and then was able to create explosives off those extensions. You know, had a big play down the, the – uh, off really a, a pressure look and was able to hit a, a guy on the sideline and then had another pressure look off of a, a – Long yardage situation and, and hit a hit a wide receiver wide open in the end zone on a busted coverage. So, I mean, I think that's really what jumped out for me offensively. Defensively, again, they controlled the line of scrimmage. You know, uh, Florida teams traditionally run the ball really well. Uh, I think they kept them to less than 100 yards total rushing yards, which doesn't happen. Um, and, and in order to do that, you got to be really uh, stout at the point of attack, and they were able to do that. So, uh, you know, again, this is a uh, this is a trench league, and you got to win in the trenches, and they clearly did that in that game. Uh, so that's that's really going to be the test for us. You've got South Carolina defense. What does it ask you about Jalen Foster and just, you know, just the versatility that it looks like? Yeah, Jalen is an instinctual safety. Um, I think he leads the uh, team with five interceptions, right? He's always around the ball, um, ha does a great job in both a, a free safety position and a coverage position. Um, and, and really does a great job of tracking the quarterback's eyes to play overlap, which is where he gets most of his interceptions. Um, so he's having a really good season for him. Eli, are you kind of still searching for that number two back? It seems like Mike, Michael Cox said for a while. I know you didn't get a lot of rushing chances at Georgia, but what are you kind of seeing there? Yeah, we're looking for consistency, and it's not just a consistency in a performance. It's a consistency in your day-to-day -day activities and how you go about your business in the weight room, in your preparation, in your practice habits, um, in taking care of your body. Um, and if you can consistently do those things, then you can be the, the number two tailback. But you can't show up one week and then not show up the next week or have you know different things uh, play out like that. And so I think that's really for us the biggest thing is the consistency um, with their preparation. You know, who can, who can pick up blitzes? You know, who, who can um, catch the ball out of the backfield and then who can run and then who can manage the easy stuff, which is showing up on time, being where you're supposed to be at the time you're supposed to be there. Eli, how much of a, a sentiment is it to have a guy like Harrison Beavis? And does that kind of play into your offensive philosophy when you, like, get within the 35? It's like it should be guaranteed points when you have a guy who, like, almost as automatic as he is. Yeah, y'all asked me that question last week. We hit the upright, man. <laughs> um, yeah, really proud of Harrison. He does a great job of – um, providing us, yeah, points, you know, um, and, and that's the name of the game is to have more points than your opponent at the end of the game. And so um, it doesn't really change how I call the plays or anything like that. It's just a nice, nice knowing when you get inside the 30 or inside the 35, you got the opportunity to go for it or got the opportunity to kick it, which isn't always the case. You know, it puts you in a position a couple of times like we did against Vanderbilt where instead of having to try to throw the football to gain the first down, you just knew, hey, I'll hand this off and get a couple more yards and we'll be able to get the points. Is this the time of the season where maybe you ramp up? I know you said last year you called him Sebastian Kanemitsky or something like that. Do you ramp up that at any point this season with how well he's doing? No, nah, I'm, not, I'm not messing with the flow right now. So, no. I don't, did I call him Sebastian Kanemitsky? I don't remember that one. I think you made that one up. <laughs> no, I did? Yeah. Uh, I, need to see, I need to hear that. Do you have that recorded? Dad, got it. Anything else? It, uh, yeah. it, it seems at all levels of football now, going for offenses are more aggressive for fourth downs than, than probably they ever have been. I'm just, is it simply a case by case decision for you, or are there certain rules you have? Hey, this situation, this game situation, we're all, I mean, obviously, you're down six, you're supposed to go, you're going for it. But, you know, yeah. uh, other things, do you, do you have certain rules you go by, or is it just case by case? Yeah, I mean, we do have uh, uh, analytics deal, and, and obviously 
there's some of that to, hey, we're in a four down territory, we're in this, we're in that, um, or we're right on the edge of field goal range and it's going to be close. You know, the percentages say you're probably better off trying to go for it than you are trying to kick it. But at the end of the day, it mostly comes down to feel. What do you feel like is the right opportunity and right thing for your team at that time to win the game? You mentioned Blaze starting the job back. Um, does that send kind of a message to your team? Hey, come to the start, loses the job, let's apply as much as we can go back to them. Is it a positive thing you can point to as an example? Yeah, I think it reflects the number one core value of always compete. And how do you respond to any given situation? Um, you know, I've talked about it all the time lessons and, and uh, or losses can be lessons and failures are not final if you don't, if you, you know, learn from them and grow from them. And I think that's the thing that we're trying to teach young men that are 18 to 22 years old. Like, there's more scrutiny in college football and college athletics than there ever has been. And it's not anybody's fault, it's just it's the reality of the world. 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 15 years ago, you know, if you didn't play good, you didn't hear about it till the next day when it was in the newspaper. If you don't play good or miss a play, it's immediately advertised on every social media account, and you may not see it till after the game, but your parents are seeing it. So then you're, as soon as you attach to your phone, you're immediately attached to a result. And what we've got to be able to do is detach from the result and engage in the process of how do I become the best version of myself by continually competing to improve? It's, it's the quest for constant improvement to be the best version of myself. And understanding that, again, lessons are losses um, and failures are not final if you don't, you know, if you learn from them and grow from them. And that's life. You know, I think everybody in here has is, is faced adversity and challenges and how do you respond to them and how do you grow from them. Um, you know, in this business, it is what it is. There's, you know, you got to win or lose and you got to face the music of that. But for these young men, they get an opportunity to continue to grow and develop as players and as people through these experiences. And, and that's really what we got to continue to preach. Um, and we got to continue to get buy in from that. And so I do think that that shows that. Um, and and that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, I think that's that's been one of his key attributes is the, the leadership that he's shown. He's been through so many ups and downs from junior college to, to to being at Rice, to being here, and understanding, you know, a little bit more of the ways of the world and battling through some tough times and circumstances. And I think he's been vocal about it. And I think our guys have responded well to it. Um, and it's you know something that we're really proud of and why um, he's a great representation of our football team. Yeah, I just want to clarify one thing. You know, at the end of the game, um, we did have offensive players available. Um, you know, Tyler was late getting out of the game, um, out of the shower and out of medical. And by the time we were ready to go, I think we had to cut the Zoom uh, short. There was no intent to prevent any offensive players um, from being made available. We don't hide from anything. We weren't disappointed in any of those guys' performance. It was just we wanted Tyler to have that opportunity because he had rushed for 1,000 yards, um, and it just didn't work out. So I apologize for that. At the end of the day, that is always on me. And uh, we will do better next time, making sure that we can have more players available. I would also like to add, it's been my policy and is my policy, um, that true freshmen don't uh, visit with the media until they're either not redshirting uh, or have contributed significantly enough to our program that they have earned the opportunity to speak for the team. As of right now, I think Makai Wingo is the only freshman that has spoken and maybe Dominic Lovett because those two guys clearly are not redshirting and have played more games than they will be able to. As of that, until that is the case with anybody else, those guys will not be available to the media. That's just a personal policy. Um, I'd be happy to discuss it with you further if you think that's something that we need to look at changing in the future. But as of right now, I feel like that's the message that I want to send. I'd rather focus on the seniors and juniors and sophomores who have done more on the field to contribute. Because when you recruit highly recruited freshmen or whatever, they're always going to be the, the natural, hey, we want those guys to speak. But they've got to earn that opportunity. And there's plenty of guys who are performing at a high level that can speak better about where we're at with the football team. It has nothing to do with a lack of trust 
or a lack of transparency within our program. It's just a personal um, protocol that I have in place. And so just wanted to address that. And, and again, if there's anything that I'm doing that, that uh, y'all feel like needs to be changed or addressed, please visit with Molly or myself, and we would love to make ourselves more accessible. I understand that y'all have a job to do and need to do it well, and uh, we have a job to do and we need to do it well, and we need to work together to do that. Uh, it's definitely not a us versus y'all and, and definitely don't have a mistrust or anything with that with the media. We're not trying to keep anything away from you. Um, you know, last week as far as closing the practices, that was just because of the speculation with Connor and was trying to give our team a competitive advantage. You know, this week you'll still have your speculation opportunity, but he's going to be out there and I knew he wasn't going to be out there last Tuesday. And so I didn't want that to be running rampant and be the featured story. So just wanted to clear the air there. And if there's anything that uh, you all need to follow up with that again, Feel free to let me know or let Molly know, and we'll answer those questions. All right, thank you.